Genre, Realistic Fiction. Second Day, First Impressions, by Michelle Knudsen. Illustrated by Craig Orbach. Essential Question. What can lead us to rethink an idea? Read about a team's adventure as they figure out clues to a scavenger hunt. Louisa hesitated at the park entrance, scanning the sea of strangers for red t-shirts and trying to ignore the butterflies in her stomach. The entire fifth grade of Greenhaven Elementary was spread out before her, along with assorted teachers and parent volunteers, wandering the sun-dappled grass and gathering excitedly in color-coded groups for the morning's event. She finally spotted her teacher, Mr. Martucci, waving at her with a clipboard from the shade of a huge oak tree. She made a beeline for him. Three of her teammates were already there. Louisa had met them yesterday in class. The boys leaning on the fence were Tyler and Sam, and the tall girl near them was Devon. Louisa hadn't had an opportunity to get to know any of them yet. Maybe today, she thought hopefully. This was her first real chance to start making some friends in this new town. She just had to get off on the right foot. All right, everyone announced Principal Goldstein into her megaphone. I know you are all anxious to begin, so please assemble with your teams to start the annual Greenhaven 5th grade second day of school scavenger hunt. Remember, you have unique sets of clues, so don't get distracted by what your rival teams are doing. The finish line is not marked on your maps. You must figure out the clues to get there. The first team to reach the finish line will be our winners. Another boy from Louisa's class, Halen, dashed over to their group. He was panting audibly as he stumbled to a stop, his sneakers untied, his red shirt inside out, and his hair a crazy mess on top of his head. Overslept again? Tyler asked. How'd you know? Halen seemed genuinely perplexed as he knelt to tie his laces. Tyler, Sam, and Devin smiled, rolling their eyes. And... Go! shouted Mrs. Goldstein. Mr. Martucci produced a small, cream-colored envelope and ripped it open. They all leaned in to read their first clue. Welcome, explorers. It's time to begin. You'll have to be both quick and clever to win. Think of the one place that has the most letters. Then go there to go on, Greenhaven go-getters. Mr. Martucci handed the map and clue to Devon and stepped back. Okay, Red Team, he said. Go to it. I'm just here to keep you company. It's your job to decipher the clues and determine where to go next. Louisa held back, uncertain, but the others jumped right in. Maybe the movie theater, suggested Devin. That's twelve letters. Greenhaven Public Library has twenty-three, said Sam, pointing at the map. Wait, you guys, said Tyler. It's a clue, right? We should have to, you know, figure something out, not just count letters. That was a good point, Louisa realized, relieved that she hadn't blurted out something ridiculous before Tyler pointed out they were on the wrong track. Oh, letters, Halen exclaimed, grinning. Not alphabet letters, the kind you mail. It's the post office. They took off for the post office at a run. Louisa necessarily let the others take the lead, since she was still unfamiliar with much of the area. Taped to the stately front door was another envelope, which Halen tore open to reveal the next clue. Your next stop is one you'll be happy to make. You'll wish you had time to stop for a break. A sweet place to go for that birthday surprise. Hurry on over, and good things will rise. Come on, Louisa told herself firmly. You have to attempt to contribute. Maybe, maybe it means someplace with an elevator? Things will rise? No, wait, I've got it, Sam said. The bakery. That's where you'd get a birthday cake for a surprise party. And cakes are good things that rise. Louisa glanced around, embarrassed, but no one seemed to care that her idea had been wrong. And now that she thought about it, Sam and Devin's ideas for the first clue had been wrong, too, and no one had teased them or anything. The butterflies in her stomach seemed to be fluttering a little less as she headed toward the bakery with the others. 
Through the bakery's front window, they spotted the next envelope attached to the cake display case. Sam darted inside to retrieve it, maneuvering deftly around amused bakery patrons, then read the clue aloud. Think of our founder, the great you-know-who. He started this town back in 1802. Make your way now to his last resting place. But time's growing short. Pick up the pace. Hey, I actually know this one, Louisa thought, astonished. To the cemetery, Devon cried. No, wait, Louisa said, stopping them. That's not right. It said his last resting place. That sounds like a cemetery to me, said Devon. Louisa nodded. I know, but he wasn't buried in the cemetery. I, I did some reading when my family decided to relocate here. The founder was actually buried near the library. There's a tree with a little plaque with his name engraved on it and everything, right out front. The other kids looked at each other. I've walked by that library almost every day of my life, Sam said. I never knew that. Good save, Devon said to Louisa. We'd have lost valuable time if we had to retrace our steps from the cemetery. We still need to hurry, Tyler reminded them, pointing at a group of yellow-shirted students running purposefully across an intersection. I know a shortcut, Halen cried. Follow me. No one moved. No, seriously, Halen said. You know how I'm always late? Trust me, I figured out a lot of shortcuts in this town. The others had to agree that made sense, and so they let Halen lead them up a tiny side street and across a scraggly patch of grass. A few more blocks, a sharp right turn, and suddenly they were standing in front of the library. Louisa found the clue taped to the plaque honoring the town's founder. Now go to the place where the pig skin is found, but don't waste too much time running around. Center yourselves, then rise to the top. When you run out of space, you'll know it's time to stop. Football stadium, Tyler said decisively. Pigskin, running around, that seems pretty obvious. I don't know what the center stuff means, though. Maybe the center of the field? Or the center section of the seating area? Devin proposed. I bet that's it, said Louisa, nodding. We should find the center section, then go up to the top. By the time they ran to the high school, home of the town's only football stadium, and up the many, many, many steps to the top, they were all out of breath. Tyler plucked the envelope from the aisle seat in the uppermost row. You're getting so close, the end is in sight. Accomplish your goal, don't give up the fight. Look where you've been, see where you are. Now navigate wisely, and you'll be a star. Devon stared blankly at the map. That doesn't narrow down the options at all. Maybe this one's the movie theater. You know, Sam said, like movie stars? Maybe, murmured Louisa. Close, like a close-up, and sight, because movies are something you watch. It could be a planetarium, said Tyler. Does our town have a planetarium? Guys! Devon exclaimed suddenly. Oh, wow! Look at this! She grabbed a pencil from her bag and placed the point at the park, where they had started. As they watched, she traced a line from there to the post office, then to the bakery, then the library, then the stadium. Do you see what I see? Louisa followed the lines with her eyes and got it at once. Their path was forming the shape of a star. They just needed one more line to complete it. A line connecting them right back to the beginning. The others saw it too, and together they turned and raced toward the park. When they reached the final stretch, Mr. Martucci veered off to the side, waving them on and shouting, Go, red team, go! Louisa could see the finish line beckoning up ahead. They were going to win. Suddenly the green team burst into sight from their left, followed by a blaze of yellow streaking by on the right. Louisa ducked her head and lengthened her stride, giving it everything she had. She could tell the others were doing the same. 
They ran faster and faster, arms pumping, feet flying, blurs of yellow and green, and now blue and purple too, crowding in from all sides. The finish line was growing closer, and Mrs. Goldstein was shouting into her megaphone, and there were other people all around, cheering and yelling words of encouragement. Post office? Library? Finally, the red team tumbled across the finish line, just one fateful step behind the greens. As Mrs. Goldstein pronounced the green team the winners, Tyler, Sam, Devon, Halen, and Louisa collapsed in a big, red, exhausted heap on the grass. So close, Tyler gasped. Yeah, Sam said, sounding even more out of breath. If only you ran a little faster, we might have won. Tyler made a face, and they all burst into laughter. Nice job, new girl. Devin said approvingly, giving Louisa a high five. We wouldn't even have come in second without your help. That was really fun, said Halen. I hope we get to be on the same team for something else. Me too, Louisa agreed, smiling. Her stomach butterflies had vanished without a trace. She lay under the trees with her new friends, still trying to catch her breath, confident that today had been only the first of many adventures yet to come.